Hi and welcome to Reaper TV. In part one of this new video series, we're going to be taking a look at how I tend to build up an initial idea of a song. So we're going to take it from the step one where we've got a rough idea of a riff. We're going to put down a rough scratch track. We're going to look at different methods of checking your timing. We're going to look at how you can do things like setting your tempo. Everything that you're going to need to do right the way up to having that rough mix at the end of everything to get a good idea whether the song that you're working on is worth continuing with. So let's take a look at how we can do all of that right now. Okay, so the first thing to say before we start doing any of these things is that the way that I do it is not the only way. There are multiple ways you can do any of this and whatever works for you is the right way. So with that being said, I'm going to show you the rough idea that I tend to sort of work with when I'm putting down a scratch idea for a, a song. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get an idea of what the riff runs like and then I'll either record a scratch track into Reaper and then I'll work out the BPM, the timing for it, or I'll sit there and play it and I'll then tap out roughly to get an idea of where I need to be. It doesn't need to be perfect because we can adjust that inside Reaper at any time, so don't worry too much about that. So. I've already recorded the track, I know the idea of where I want to be, and my BPM is set to around 180. Now, you've got two ways of doing this. You can either insert the number directly in and set your BPM for the track. Alternatively, if you want to just tap out what you think is going to be close to where you need it to be, then you can use the tap to tempo option that's built into Reaper. So if you don't know this, if you take your mouse over where it says BPM, you see it changes to tap and you can now use that for tap tempo. So all I need to do is just tap with my left mouse button roughly in time where I want it to be. As you see, as I tap, then my timing changes and I get close to where I want it to be and you see everything else adjusts accordingly. So I, like I say, I know this needs to be 180 or around 180, so we'll use that as our starting point. So there's our BPM set down to start off with. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create my first track, which is going to be my guitar scratch track. So we'll just double click to create that. We'll set the monitoring on there and we'll set an instance of Easy Mix on that so I can pull in a guitar track. So let's just bring up Easy Mix and I'm going to use one of my favorites. So I'm just going to favorites and I'm going to choose aggression. So there's my guitar track set up and I'm going to quickly just click on guitars to color code that. Now the next thing I want to do is put down my rough scratch track for the drums. Now, you can work with drums if you want to. Alternatively, if you're comfortable working with a metronome, then you can use that as a click track. And then you can, so once you set your tempo, you can then just go into the metronome option. And you'll see that if we right click on that, we have a whole host of different options available. We can change the metronome sound from the default clicks. So if we wanted to, we could easily put in drums in there. We can change the beat pattern. So you can see that the, the first note is always the louder note, and then the three subsequent notes are quieter. You can choose any of those that you want. So you can have all of them being the same level. You can have just one note every four bars or sort of uh, four loud notes. You know, you can customize that to whatever you want to do. You can specify whether you count in before playback and or recording. So you can do that. And you can also set the primary level and how many measures are counted in before you actually start recording or playing back. So you've got a whole range of different options in there. I'm not going to use the click track. I'm not going to use the, t uh, the metronome. I'm going to set up a rough drum track. So I know, like I say, I've set my BPM to where I want it to be. So the next thing I'm going to do is just load in my template for my drum track. Now, again, you don't need to do this. I've just set this up because it makes my life quicker and easier. So if I right click and come down to insert track from template, you can see that I can choose default drum tracks. That will load up everything in place for me, including the instance of Easy Drummer with the patch that I've set up. Now, I've covered this in a previous video, which will be linked in the description below. So if you want to set this up for yourself with track templates, check that video out, and it really does help speed up your process of doing anything. But for now, we've got the initial things put in this. The drum track is ready for us to start working. So I'm going to scroll back to make sure I'm right back at the beginning. Make sure that I've got the snap enabled. And I'm going to run that back to make sure I'm right back at the beginning. Then I'm simply going to highlight a block, probably more than I need. And then I'm going to come up and I can go to either insert and choose new MIDI item. Alternatively, I can just go to the keyboard or the uh, shortcut that I've set up on here, which is insert new MIDI item. So that will then set up a blank MIDI track ready to start taking MIDI data in on the selected track, which in this instance is my Easy Drummer track. So I'm going to hit that and there we go. 
So now everything is set up. I just need to double click on the MIDI and I can now load in my MIDI editor. And once I've done that, I can set up some of the parameters in here. So I'm going to specify that we're dealing with one eighth notes. That's fine. I'm going to come to file and I'm going to choose note names and load note names from file. And then I'm going to use the Easy Drummer 2 MIDI note names. These are all freely available from the Reaper stash. So you can go and get most of the commonly sort of uh, commercial and free drum track editors. So you've got Easy Drummer with different patches in there, Superior Drummer and so on, Slate Drums and things like that. You can obviously, if you want to, set up and customize your own text files that have all this information in there. Now, I've set things up in a customized way, so I can quickly just go in and say this is a drum track I want to work with, so I'm in drum mode. And all that does is set up the shape of the symbols that are going to denote the drum track. So I prefer to work with the diamonds because it's easier than working with the, the bars and so on, which are better when you're dealing with MIDI instruments like pianos and keyboards and synths and things. So you can see now I've got all of my drum track, or my, all my individual MIDI tracks, uh, labeled on the left hand side and we've got the timing set up so I'm just going to come in and I'm going to hold the control key down and zoom with my mouse wheel to make everything just a little bit larger to make life easier when I'm working with this so now the next thing I want to do is find my kick drum there we go and I'm just going to start dropping in notes now to get my timing where I want it to be as my my sort of drum click track so I'm going to specify that we want like so and I'm going to just right click drag on there then hold the control key down and I'm just going to duplicate these blocks a couple of times so I've got my rough drum track ready so that's not the entire MIDI track that's just part of it so I'm just going to do the same again and um, we'll just drag that over and get the next part in there so there we go so if we listen back to that now we just got a simple kick drum in there that's going to be used as my time in so there we go not worry about velocity because this is just a rough track that's there for timing. Once we've got that down, we can start fleshing out and creating a proper drum beat. But for now, it's all we need. So let's just close that down. And as you can see, we've now got the first part of it set up. Probably isn't long enough, but for what I want to demonstrate right now, it's going to be more than enough. So the next thing we're going to do is just go and record that rough guitar scratch track on top of this. I'm not dealing with left and right tracks. I'm not even bothered if it's going to be perfectly in time. I'm just roughing things out to get my time and get everything set up before I go in and do the full on recording session. So let's move on to that now. Okay, so before I hit record to start recording this scratch disc or the scratch guitar track, couple of things I want to do. First thing, I want to set the metronome because I don't want to use it for my timing, but I want to use it for my counting at the beginning. So I'm going to right click, set that up to make sure that the metronome is set to, re for, to playback during recording, to set it to counting after two measures, and that's fine. So I can just OK that, switch that on, make sure that's, that's enabled. The next thing, I want to make sure that my track is record armed, ready to start recording. So everything is now in place to start recording that scratch guitar part. So let's do that next. Okay, so there's our scratch guitar track done, ready to move on to the next part. So let's have a listen to that just to make sure that it's it's sounding okay. So we'll run that back now and could take a quick listen. So let's take that out. <laughs> There we go, that's the rough first guitar part just put down to get us a, an idea of where we want to be. So I can start structuring my song around this now if I wanted to. I can start fleshing out the drums a little bit to have a bit more than just that kick, just sort of giving us a timer, straightforward timer, so it start to sound a bit more so where we want it to be. But I'm not going to worry about that for now. What I'll do is I'm going to use that as a rough scratch track now to monitor with, and then I'm going to go in and record the second and third guitar takes so we can then pan that off left and right and just the sound. So. Let's do that next. Let's just disable that one. I'm going to create two new tracks. So we just insert new track, Control T. So there's my two other tracks. So I'm going to set this to be 
guitar left, and this will be guitar right. And let's just name this guitar Scratch, so we know where it is. So there we go. So the next thing I want to do is just pan this off left, pan this off right, come up and choose another instance of Easy Mix. And for this example, we're going to do the same again. We're going to come in, we're going to have an aggression on the, on the one track. But on the second track, I'm going to put a different patch just so I can get some difference in sound. So on this one, we're going to set up the Middle Earth XXL. So we'll use that one, which is just kind of thicker sounding guitar. So I'm not bothered too much about what they are. They're just there for now to use this as an idea. So what I'll do now is I'm going to record those other two guitar parts left and right just to get my initial guitar parts put in there. Now, I know we're only concentrating on a small portion of the song, but the principle is the same right the way throughout. And we'll start to look at some other guitar parts later on and flesh this out a little bit more. But I just want to give you a flavor for what I'm doing and how I work. So there we go. We've got that set up. So the next thing is now let's just arm this left track and let's record the guitar part for that. OK, so I've recorded both the left and right guitar parts now and I've panned those off left and right. We've got two different guitar tones on there, so everything is in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play that back now. We'll take off the guitar scratch track and you can kind of see where we are at this point. They're not perfect. I would go back and spend a lot more time recording these and I would then go through and time align and make sure that everything matches up where I'd want it to be. But this is roughly where I want. And like I say, at the moment, we're just demoing this out to get the structure together. We can tweak and fine tune and overdub and all those things later on. Okay, so I'm going to play the track back now and I'm going to leave the guitar scratch track in it to start off with and I'll disable that so you can see where we are with the rough sounds on there. So let's check that out. Right, so with those guitar parts down and the kick drum and everything in place, I want to go in and just quickly flesh out a little bit of the drums just to show you what I do there. Now, we'll go into this in more detail in the second and third video and so on, but I'll just show you roughly how I'd work with this. So, open up the MIDI drum track. Let's find our snare. There we go. So what I would do now is I'd listen back to this. I'll see where we are in the track and see where I want to start bringing some other drums into it. So let's, let's take a look at that now. Okay, so I stopped it at this point now because what I want to do here is start doubling up the kick drums just to give it that little bit of flavor so we start to build the momentum in the song. So I've got a kick drum, a second kick drum there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding a second kick drum in. So So let's take a listen to that. Yep, that's certainly what I want it to be. I would still go in and flesh that a bit more, but it's getting the rough basics of what we want in this. So once we get to that point, we're now ready to start adding in a little bit of a drum beat as opposed to just a kick drum. So let's start building that up now, and I'll take you through, and I'll just show you what I would do step by step just to get it roughly where I want it to be. You can see when we start to add this in, it's probably highlighting some areas in the song that, or the guitar part that could do with being fine-tuned. And this is why this is the scratch phase where you don't worry too much about getting anything perfect. You just get everything in roughly in place. So we've got the kick, we've got the snare drum in there for a bit more of an interesting pattern. We'll put some hi-hats in there and then I'll probably flesh it out with a double, double kick drum every now and again, maybe a drum roll or two. Like I say, let's just keep this simple. So I'm going to put the hi-hats in now and we'll wrap it up after that point. So let me go and do that.
So there we go. You can see now I've started to flesh out the drum beat. We've just got the basics of that put together. And hopefully what you can see is how quickly you can start to build up an idea of a song. So we're going to wrap this first part of this series up at this point. And in the next video, we'll take a look at where we can go in and start adding the bass in there. We'll then come in and start to actually tidy up the guitar parts and move on to some more guitar parts in there, as well as looking at how we can actually put tempo changes as part of a song. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please hit that subscribe button below to be kept up to date with all of the new content we add. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video, please pop those in the comment section below. We read everything you post and try to answer as many questions as possible. And until next time, happy mixing.